Narayana Namaskritya Narai Chaiva Narutama Devam Sarasati Vyasam Tato Jayam Diraye Nasta Parjiswa Bhadresu Nijam Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke <coughs> Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki Vede Ramani Chaiva Purane Bharati Tata Adu Andhya Chamade Chahari Sapatya Gayati Mukam Karati Bhajalam Pangu Langrati Grim Yakripataham Bande Sri Guru Dinat Bhattarini Paramananda Madhava Dhamma Prajitu Kata Bhutra Paramoni Masram Satan Vedan Vastavam Atavastu Shivadan Tapata Yamalana Shima Bhagavati Mahamuni Kritanki Vaipara Ishwara Sadhyuridi Avarudya Tetra Kitapata Kishinan Yasuva Shriamana Yam Krishna Parama Purusha Bhakti Utpadaya Champansan Ato Yam Brahma Sutana Bharata Tavani Naya Gayati Bhaschara Prasu Vedata Parabhimita Savaveda Jiya Sanam Saram Saram Parabhimita Savaveda Antam Sarami Sri Bhakta Mishiti Tara Samita Shati Ptasana Yatya Surati Kachit Onamo Bhagavate Vasvide Bhaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are going to continue the reading of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 7, text uh, 27. The killing of the demon Trina Valter Tam Asmana Asmanam Mayamana Atmano Guru Mataya Gale Grita Utsvish Rastam Nasaknod Advuta Bhakam Tam Krishna Asmanam Very heavy stone Like a lump of iron Manyamanan Thinking like that Atmana Guru Mataya, because of being heavier than he could personally perceive. Gale, his neck, Grite, being embraced or encircled by his arms. Utra stone. To give up, Na Asakno was not able. Adbuta Abakam, this wonderful child who was different from an ordinary child. Translation and Papa by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Slapapapada Ki. Because of Krishna's weight, Trinavata considered him to be like a great mountain or a hunk of iron. But because Krishna had cut the demon's neck 
The demon was unable to throw him off. He therefore thought of the child as wonderful, since he could neither bear the child nor cast aside the body. Gurave Gurachandaya Radikaya Tadala Ye Krishna Ya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Nama Agyana Timandasya Ganangana Salakaya Taxus on the Tanya Natasma Sri Gurave Nama Vantaka Vatra Vyascha Kripa Sindhi Vata Patitana Bhavana Vibhyo Vashna Vibhyo Namo Nama Oh, I've never read the property. <laughs> Purport. Trivata he intended to take Krishna up in the sky and kill him. But Krishna enjoyed the pastime of riding on Trinavata's body and traveling for a while in the sky. Thus, Trinavata's attempt to kill Krishna failed. Why Krishna, Ananda Chimajaras Vigraha, enjoyed this pastime. Now, since Trinavata was falling because of Krishna's heaviness, he wanted to save himself by throwing Krishna half from his neck, but was unable to do so because Krishna held him very tightly. Consequently, this will be the last time for Trinavata's yogic power. Now, he was going to die by the arrangement of Krishna. Yeah. So, uh, Trinavata, who was uh, associate of Kamsa, just like the cup of demons before him and the many, many other demons that is going to come, they all associate of cancer. Cancer's friend, or some of them cancer's servant, because many, many of these demons, they at one time adversary of cancer by Kamsa subdued all of them. Uh, Gaga Samitya narrated many, many of these demons. So this particular one, uh, Trinavata, uh, came to Vrindavan in the form of a uh, hurricane, hurricane demon. You know, different, different parts of the world, this wind is now, in America it's called a hurricane, here in the Asia, they call it uh, typhoon, something like that. And when it comes like this, you know, just blinding everywhere, so much dust in the sky, you know, very, very fearsome. So Trinavata, he saw, oh, I could kill this child by taking him into the sky. So the, the lost Lila, Lord Krishna's pastimes, it's always difficult to, to understand. It's always difficult to comprehend. Actually, Lord Krishna says that, uh, as said in Bhagavad Gita, that Jama Kama Chame Divyam, Evangelate that uh, that if one can understand my pastimes to be transcendental, then one can be free from the repeated ocean of. Uh, birth and death. But the last pastime is such that even the great personalities sometimes they find it difficult to understand. Just like yesterday we celebrated the, the appearance of Laura Machandra yesterday. Laura Machandra who was known as Mayada Purushottama he was God, personality of Godhead but it came with a specific purpose. Mayada means the rules, the, the up order to uphold, you know, the morality and all that. So one time, uh, 
when after Ravan, he had kidnapped Mother Sita, you know, that time. So, uh, Loram, Lila, and Lakshma, they were wandering in the forest. And that time, uh, the Lord was lamenting for his wife, you know, calling out Sita, 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 you know, lamenting. So that time, Lord Shiva, he was in the sky along with his wife, Pavati, wandering in the sky. They are wandering, after all, they are both masters of the universe. So, when Pavati Devi, she saw that Ram is lamenting for his wife. And he's supposed to be God, how can God be lamenting like this? Lamenting just like an ordinary person. So she was expressing her doubt to Lord Shiva, her husband, that how come Jesus is the Supreme Lord? Why is he lamenting for his wife like this? So Lord Shiva replied that, well, the last pastimes is difficult to understand. This is his pastimes. It may be difficult you know, for, for anyone to understand this. But poverty, Devi, she found it difficult to, you know, to accept. So what she did was that in the path where uh, Ram and Lakshman, where they were passing by, so she assumed, as, assumed the form of Sita Devi. She became Sita. So she became Sita, and then she came in front, and then, so she came in front of Lord Ram. She thought that now she will, uh, you know, try to bewilder Lord Ram into accepting that, oh, here's my wife, Sita Devi. But when Ram saw her, he said, oh, mother, what are you doing here? What are you doing here in the forest by yourself? Because Lord, the Lord know that this is poverty, Devi. He said, oh, why, why are you here in the forest by yourself? It's, aren't you supposed to be with your husband like this? So, and then poverty, she realized that, oh, the Lord know. And then she became kind of ashamed that she had doubted the, uh, what her husband had told her. So, and she found it very difficult to go back in front of Sita Devi. I mean, sorry, in front of uh, Lord Shiva, Shivaji, because she, she had doubt his words. So much so that uh, she had to figure out some ways to cast off that body. So that's the episode of uh, how being the daughter of uh, Daksha, she gave up that body and the Daksha Jagger. So, you know, the last lilas is like that because it's difficult to, to understand. That's why the Lord says that uh, only the devotee can understand him. Hmm? It's mentioned in the Sutta is that Hari Ananta, Hari Kata Ananta, that the Lord, the Lord is eternal, the Lord is, is endless, and at the same time his pastimes, his activities, they are also eternal and they are also endless. And of course, the Lord performed his pastimes, activities, basically for the pleasure of his devotees. And of course, the Lord relish all his pastimes. Now, there are uh, many, many uh, lila avatars, many, many uh, forms of Godhead who have come to perform some specific lilas. Just like uh, uh, Vaman Avatar, uh, Nishingar Avatar, Ram Avatar. So they all come to perform specific pastime, Lila. But Lord Krishna, he is called Punam Avastam. This is the how uh, Sila Jiva Goswami, no, Sila Rupa Goswami described him in the Lagu Bhagavatam Mita. That yes, Lord Krishna is. Puna Abhashtan is the complete, the original, supreme personality of Godhead. So, which means the qualities that is in him, that is not there among all other avatars. 
the specific quality, such as Lila Madroyi, the, 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 the pastimes, effort, uh, it, it is not there in full in other incarnations. So when the Lord appeared 5,000 years ago, right from the time of his appearance, the Lord was performing so many, many wonderful activities, especially in, in, uh, in relation to the killing of uh, you know, various demons just before he was, you know, just few a few weeks old, he killed Putana. He was only a few weeks, a few weeks old. And then Sakatasura, you know, the, the uh, cat demon, when the Lord was three months old, he, he killed him, and now Trinavata. All these demons, the Lord killed them in his infancy. He, he, the Lord was a child, just a just few months old, you see. But even though it's a few months old, and his devotees, the, you know, especially the brothers, his devotees in Dhamma, they, they saw him as their pet child, as their loving child. But uh, the Lord's omnipotence is not diminished. Hmm? Why his devotees, their relation, the Madhuya above of the Lord, because they are seeing the Lord as their loving child. But at the same time, also the law, no, the law is also performing the activities of killing the demons. So, when the uh, Trinavata, when he had come to Vrindavan to kill the demons, first of all, when the law wants to perform a pastime, he does that, especially the pastimes of killing the demons, he does that along with fulfillment of so many, many, many other things, many, many other, many, many other pastimes are simultaneously performed. You know, why? Yes. The law, because uh, Mother Yeshuda, she was carrying Lord Krishna on her lap. And then, he became very, very, very heavy. He became so heavy like a mountain. He became so heavy. So Mother Yeshuda, you know, she felt the heaviness of her child, of Krishna, so she put him down. And then she went inside the house. Even though she wasn't, even though, I mean, who's, who's going to put her child down just like that? Actually, just like when uh, many, many of the elderly gopis, they were chastising one of your children that, that uh, how can you just put your child down just like that? So anyway, due to the influence of Yoga Maya, so she put the child Krishna down, and then she, because Krishna became so heavy, and then she, she, she couldn't figure out how come Krishna is so, so heavy like this. So she went inside the house. Now, some few things that the Lord wanted to accomplish, one, he, he knew that the demon, this demon has come, this Trinavata has come, and sometimes, the demigods, there are many, many demigods who have taken uh, birth within the Yadu dynasties because before the Lord's appearance, he had ordered all the, all the demigods to appear, to take birth in the, in the, in the Yadu dynasty, Vrishni, like that, because the Lord wanted to perform his pastime. So, now, their wives, they are, you know, up in the heavenly planet. So the Lord, I mean, the, their wives, they wanted to actually have a darshan of the Lord. They wanted to have the darshan of the Lord. So they were hankering for the darshan of the, of the beautiful form of the Lord. So the Lord, Krishna, he, he wanted to fulfill their desires by riding the sky so that the the heavenly ladies, they can have a darshan. So when Mother Yeshida put him down, and then immediately Trinavata came with his big, big wing, big fearful wind, and so much so that 
the hollow branch, the hollow branch became dark. Heavy wind, heavy wind, and so much rocks and everything was falling because when the the wind is going on, taking up all the dust, all the um, rocks and boulders, taking them up and just creating a very a very massive uh, a massive uh, devastation. No one could see each other. No one could see each other. It was such a dense, a dense thing. So Trinavata carry, carry Krishna up in the sky. He thought that now I'd be able to kill him. As we say, the demons, they are so foolish that uh, they always think that, uh, yes, they want to kill that person whom they actually know that cannot be killed. He can't be killed. But still, because of their foolishness, they say, okay, I will try to kill him. So this was their, their mentality. So the Trinavata carried Krishna into the sky, way up into the sky. It was mentioned that uh, it was to the height of uh, 800,000 miles up in the sky. So it was so high up in the sky, 800,000 miles. So by going up, which means actually reach the higher planets, so all the heavenly ladies, they were able to have darshan as they had hankered for. So their desires, the law fulfilled, the law, it fulfilled their, their desires that way. And then, as Trinavata was carrying Krishna up in the sky, and then, of course, the Lord manifested his, his opulence, his vibhuti. So he became heavier than Trinavata himself. The Lord became so heavy, you know. Even though Trinavata he was such a big, he had a big mystic power that he could assume any form he wants. Then the Lord became much heavier than he. The Lord became much heavier than he. So Tinevata was wondering, what is this? What is this? What kind of stone is on my neck? And what, what is this? Hmm? He was he was amazed. He could not, you know, this like a like a big mountain on his neck. Hmm? This is how uh, Tinevata was feeling. You know, this is it's, it's expressed here that Adbuta. Adbuta Barakam, that this child, this, this must not be an ordinary child. That he felt that he such a heaviness. And he tried to throw him off his neck. He tried to throw him off because it's such a heavy thing. He tried to throw him off. Still, he could not, he could not do so because Krishna had completely. Uh, held him tightly, held his neck very, very tightly. So Krishna held him tight, tightly. So even though he tried as much as he could to throw Krishna off, he could not do so. And of course, it's also expressed by the, by the commentaries of the Acharya that when Krishna was up in the sky on the, on the, on the neck of uh, uh, Trinavata, that Krishna, he, in order to manifest as part of his Balya Lila, the childhood pastime, he felt afraid that, oh, it's in the sky, so therefore I must hold on nicely to, his, to, his, to this demon's uh, neck because he's you know, like afraid of falling, afraid of falling. So he held tightly to his neck. Of course, this is just an expression of his uh, childhood pastimes, Balya Lila. But so, so the, the demon, he, he tried as much as he can, he could not uh, throw Krishna off because the Lord just hold him tightly. And of course, in the, in the subsequent verses, we're going to read how Krishna eventually killed the Trinabata, how 
by smashing his head, he fell down on the rock. He killed, he killed but of course, even though the demon fell down, still Krishna was not uh, Krishna was not hurt. Now Trinavata, uh, such a mighty demon. So his previous life was actually revealed also. His previous life, that previously, it's not that uh, normally some of the demons, they were previously demons in their previous life, and some, they become demoniac due to being caused by some great personalities. So Trinavata himself, in his previous life, he was, uh, he was a king. He was a king, he's called uh, the king of Bandudesh, he was a king. And he was actually you know, a devotee of Lord Hari. He was actually, his meant that he was a devotee of Hari. He was, uh, you know, he was very, very devoted to the Brahmanas. You know, he was very, very, he was very uh, charitable and all that. But there was, being a king, so there was one time, he was enjoying himself with, with so many ladies. He was, uh, he was on the bank of the river and he was enjoying himself with so many, many ladies. Uh, so that time, uh, Divas Muni was passing by. Divas Muni was a great sage. But when Divas Muni was passing by, but this king, as he was enjoying himself with the ladies, he did not pay attention to the sage. He did not pay any attention to the verse money. So, saying this, the, uh, the verse money became very angry with him. He said, you become a demon. He cursed him that you become a demon. So he was cursed to become a demon. And uh, he, uh, and then he, he begged, he prayed to, you know, divorce money that, please be kind upon me. Be kind upon me by not giving me disgust. But divorce money said, no, you're going to become a demon. However, in the Lord's future incarnation, when the Lord makes his appearance, you will be liberated by him. You will be liberated when the Lord made his, uh, his appearance. So in this way, Trinavata uh, became a demon, an associate of Kamsa. Now, he become, uh, this is by him being killed by Krishna, this would be his, uh, his ultimately his path to, to, uh, to liberation. So, um, Lord Krishna is called Lila, Lila Prashottana because he's the enjoyer of many, many uh, uh, pastimes. The pastimes, which is pastimes, they are very, very uncommon. No one could do so in the no other incarnation of the Lord have such lila that the Lord performed. So the, uh, the Lord's performance pastime, he does, he does it fully. So, uh, so the devotees, they relish the Lord's many, many uh, activities. When the Lord, of course, the whole, the whole ten canto of Bhagavatam, it's all about Lord Krishna's uh, wonderful activities the only ten canto of, of Bhagavatam. And that's why this uh, uh, Bhagavatam ten canto is described to be the lost, the lost face. Because there are many, the, the previous nine canto of Bhagavatam, um, they, are, they are described to be different, different parts of the lost body. From the first canto to the ninth canto, they are described to be the lost, different, different bodily limbs. But his face is said to be the tenth canto. You know, his beautiful, smiling, smiling face. So therefore, the, 
the relishment of the Lord's Lila is there. So in the first uh, in the first chapter, um, first chapter, text number four. So Parikshit Maharaj said, "Nevrita ta shayu pagiyamanam babo sadak shotra mano biramat ka utamas loke gunanu vadat puman viraj." Virajeta bina pasubnan. So it, it says, let's talk about the, the hearing about Krishna's glories, glory, uh, glory, uh, his glorious activities. The, the, the translation here says that glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the, in the Parampara system. That is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to a disciple. Now, such glorification is relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are the right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who we see hearing such glorification of the Lord, except a butcher or one who is killing his own self. So which means the medicine for the material, material disease is hearing about loss, about Krishna Kata. That is the medicine for curing material disease. Osha, the Osha means the, the medicine. Of course, we all seek in this material world and that's why we are here. But the only medicine is just to hear about Krishna. That's the only medicine. Hmm? And Sri Papa said in the purport here, he said, in India, it is the practice among the general populace to hear about Krishna, either from Bhagavad Gita or from Srimad Bhagavatam, in order to gain relief from the disease of repeated birth and death. Although India is now falling, when there is a message that someone will speak about Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatams, thousands of people still gather to hear. This verse indicates, however, that such recitation of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam must be done by persons completely freed from material desires. Nivrita Tashe. Everyone within this material world, beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, is full of material desires for sense enjoyment, and everyone is busy in sense gratification. But when thus engaged, one cannot fully understand the value of Krishna Kata either in the form of Bhagavad Gita or in Srimad Bhagavatam. So which means, to, in order to really understand the last topic, Krishna Kata, especially the message of Bhagavatam, there has to be the less desire for materialistic enjoyment. Because it's, it's, if one is full of material enjoyment, uh, one has so much desire for material enjoyment, then it's difficult to appreciate, to really understand Krishna Kata. So therefore it's mentioned that uh, in Nivrita Nivrit, say that uh, Nivrita means there has to be, you know, the elimination of the, of the desire to enjoy this material world. So that elimination uh, must be there. Then the material disease can be, can be killed. So when when Krishna was up in the sky, and the, and the my mother showed her, even though because she had, she had left Krishna outside, she had left Krishna outside. She went inside, and then she immediately know she immediately remembered that oh my child is outside, and that this heavy wind is there, this heavy heavy hurricane is there, and then thinking about a, about a child. She became unconscious. She was lamenting, greatly, Jose, oh, lamenting that what is this, what has happened to my, to my child? 
and then she, she, you know, she fell unconscious, you know. Even though all the bridge buses, the only bridge bus ladies, they all try as much as possible to, you know, to try to, to, to revive her. So, because after all, bridge buses, Krishna is their life, either as a child or as when he grew up, as a, you know, when he's Balia, when he's also Puganda age, different age that Krishna is, still. Krishna is their life. Krishna is the life of the bridge of person. They are the greatest devotee of, uh, of Lord Krishna. So, many, many pastimes that we are going through here in Sri Bhagavatam, the Tadistan Kanto, and the more we become very absorbed in this, all these beautiful narrations, the more we will find ourselves being, being relieved of all materialistic uh, uh, desires. And the more we become relief of material desires, the more attracted we will be to Krishna. And the more we become attracted to Krishna, ultimately, you know, we, our exi existence in this material world is finished. And then we go back to the spiritual world. <laughs> to go back to that place, take part in the last Lila. Because the last pastime is eternal, and the last pastime is ongoing, it's always ongoing. The last goes, the last performance pastime in every universe, which means the moment one particular universe finish, another is, this, another pastime is going on in another, another universe. So usually, when devotees leave their body, having become Christian conscious, they will go to that particular planet or that particular universe uh, where the Lord pastimes is, is going on. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, <laughs> some, some comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah, it's just like when uh, after Krishna killed the Sakatasura, you know, and the, the 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 other small children, they know that Krishna kicked the uh, the cat because it's actually a very big cat, it's huge, big cat, and because Krishna was put under this underneath this cat, and because it is, it, it is within this cat that this demon was hiding, that Krishna, you know. By the, by the touch of his tiny leg, this cat fell down. So the, the children, they saw this, that oh, but when the children, when they told the, uh, you know, Bijibasi, Modiya Shoda, Nade Maharaj, that because of the kick of Krishna, uh, this cat fell down. But they did not believe the children, they just said, this is just a child, child talk. They did not, they did not believe in a, in a believe them. Because the Bridget the these devotees, uh, they are under Madhya, you know, the, under the internal energy of Krishna, Krishna's Swarup Shakti. Because they are, you know, they are not ordinary devotees, they are the greatest caliber of devotees. So they are under this Madhya bath, whereby they don't see Krishna as God, they see him just as their loving re re relative. Another example is like just when Krishna, when he went to, um, when, he's, when Nanda Maharaj was captured by Varuna Dev, he was captured by, uh, because Nanda Maharaj, he had gone to bathe early in the morning, and the servants of Varuna Dev, they captured him, and they took him to the abode of uh, Varun. 
And so when Krishna uh, heard that uh, his father had been arrested by Varun Dev, so Krishna even immediately went there, immediately went to the abode of Varun. And when Varun, when he saw Krishna, he, was, he, he became afraid. And then immediately, he and the others, they immediately started worshipping Krishna, doing all kind of jaggers and worshipping, put Krishna on the throne, do, you know. So, yes, um, Nanda Maharaj was, was observing this. So, Nanda Maharaj was saying that when I came here, I was arrested and the, you know, by this fellow. But when my son came, they were worshipping him. So he was kind of amazed that how come these demigods they are worshiping my son, you know? But of course, even though Nanda Maharaj saw it, still he never think that his son is God. He never said oh, my son must be God because even when he came out and he was telling the Bujabasi that oh this is what happened, you know, I was arrested by Varun Dev, and then my when and then my son came, uh, Krishna came. And everyone was worshipping him, you know. So Nanda Maharaj was narrating this to the Bhujabhasi. And uh, of course, the more they hear this, the more they want to hear, you know. But still, they just, even though they know that uh, his activities, they are superhuman activities, these only activities that can only be performed by God, still they never accept that, yes, Krishna is God, it's, you know. So, um, um, it's a very mysterious thing that how come the Bijabasi don't just have this understanding that maybe Krishna is God. You know, they just because the Lord Himself, because He wanted to enjoy Himself, you know, in that way. So the Lord always have them be covered by Yoga Maya. So this is Yoga Maya's own Yoga Maya's own uh, activity to make sure that the covering of Krishna is God is there, that covering is, is there, that Krishna, uh, that the Bhujabhasi, they will never think that Krishna is God, that Krishna is just their wonderful child, their wonderful you know, relatives. In this way, because this is what the Lord himself, this is what he want to relish. He want to relish, you know, these this pastimes. So therefore, Yoga Maya play, you know, this role like that. Whereas, when Krishna is in Mathura or Dwarkas or any other place, he's God. Everybody pray to him as God. It's only Vrindavan that is not God. But outside of Vrindavan, he's God. You know? Is that, maybe you want to comment on that? Yeah, we should, we should try to hear and understand the appearance and activities. But when, I guess when it gets very intimate, one forgets the uh, you know, academic side of things, but for, for all of us, the studying, understanding the appearance and activities of the Lord is very, very beneficial. I guess it becomes spontaneous, you know, the way it gets spontaneously. <laughs> I probably want to say something. Okay. So what is the for you? Like 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Hey, I wanted to ask a question. Appearance is based on the our understanding is based on the mercy of the guru. It's based on the mercy of the spiritual master. So we have understood by the mercy of the spiritual master. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, it's if one surrender to the spiritual master, then one can understand things. So it's like it's like Prabhupada said that uh, all this thing can be known to you only by his mercy. That's the only way we render service to him. The more we render service to him, the more faithful we, be, we become. That's the only way. There's no other way to understand. It's not by academic knowledge that uh, we can understand the lost pastor. So many scholars, they are reading Bhagavatam. So many universities, they are reading Bhagavatam. But how many of them actually accept Krishna as God? No, they don't understand. By service to the spiritual master, who is a pure devotee of Krishna, then we can solve we in this can only by the message of Prabhupada that we get to know something about Krishna. He gave us the faith. Because surrender to him, he gave us the faith. So it's only by his there's no other way, by the mercy of the Guru. Okay. But if you, if you begin to doubt what the Guru said, then there's a there'd be chaos, problem. Just like Mother Poverty doubt the Lord Shiva, and then she became she found us, she found herself in a you know, precarious situation. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So, Shumbakotam ki, Sila Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.